uh, this is a public hearing for Amendment 44, which is considering revisions to the minimum stock size threshold for certain reef fish stocks. This is a single action item. There's only one set of alternatives in here. And regardless of what the council decides, this is not going to have any immediate impact in on the water management, but it may have some uh, 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 some factor in in future determinations of whether or not a stock is overfished. So first of all, since we talked about uh, is a stock overfished, what do we mean by that? And, and the, the term overfished actually has several different uh, meanings. Uh, there's two definitions that we're going to be concerned with here. The general scientific definition is that when a stock's biomass, spawning stock biomass or its egg production potential has been reduced below whatever level is needed to produce maximum sustainable yield on a continuing basis from a biological con uh, condition, the stock's considered overfished. However, uh, normally we want to keep the stock at or above that MSY level, but we know that the stocks fluctuate year to year due to natural fluctuations. So under the Magnuson-Stevens Act, we are allowed to let the stock fluctuate a little below that MSY level before it's officially declared overfished. So the legal definition of overfished is that the stock's biomass or egg production has been reduced below a minimum stock size threshold that's established by the council. And that threshold can be almost anything. It can be at the MSY level or it can be as low as one half of the MSY level. And we'll get into that in a little while. Uh, as I said, the uh, stock level, the MSST is some stock level that's normally set somewhere below the MSY level to allow for fluctuations. But if the stock drops below that threshold, NIMS will send the council a letter saying that the stock has been declared overfished and that triggers a requirement for the council to put a rebuilding plan in effect, which usually has some fairly restrictive measures for it and some time frame when the stock has to be built, rebuilt, typically uh, 10 years or less. Um, once we put a rebuilding plan in effect, the stock will rebuild, hopefully it will rebuild. At some point, it'll go back above this MSST threshold, but it will stay below, it will still be below the MSY level, which is where we ultimately want it to go. So when that happens, a stock would be no longer declared overfished, but the rebuilding requirement would continue until the biomass reaches that biomass capable of sustaining the MSY. Uh, now, as far as where to set the uh, MSST, like I said, there's a fairly broad range that we're allowed, and there's two schools of thought for where it should be set. One school of thought says that Allow for these natural fluctuations, but don't allow for anything else. Just set the biomass, the thresh, the MSST threshold as close to the MSY le level as you can get after allowing for the uh, natural fluctuations. That way, if a stock does become overfished, we find out that it's overfished fairly quickly and we don't have that far to go to rebuild it back to the MSY level. Uh, the other school of thought is to allow the council as much flexibility as possible to try to address the stock without the constraints of having a rebuilding plan, set the threshold well below the uh, MSY level. And we're allowed to go as far as 50% below. If we go any lower, uh, we reach a point at which most stocks reach a situation where uh, uh, it's not just that the biomass isn't at the MSY level, but the number of fish being removed actually exceeds the ability of the stock to create new fish. That's called a recruitment collapse. As I said, uh, uh, it generally occurs, and this is just a general rule of thumb, at around 50% of the MSY biomass level. So I believe that's the reason why the National Standard 1 guidelines that we follow don't allow MSST to be set below 50% of BMSY. So that's, uh, that's our low level uh, uh, threshold for where we can send it. Now currently, uh, for most of the stocks where we have an MSST defined in the uh, reef fish fishery management plan, we use a formula for defining what MSST should be. As that formula on the right hand side, you see biomass or egg production is one minus M times BMSY, where M is the natural mortality rate. 
uh, what this does is it ties that buffer between MSY and the MSST level to the natural mortality rate of the stock that's also related to the longevity of the stock. Uh, the idea being that if you have a long-lived stock fish that has a natural mortality of say 0 0.1, that generally is a long-lived fish with a low natural mortality rate, uh, this formula would set the uh, the MSST level at 90% of the MSY level, which is fairly close because we wouldn't expect too much fluctuation in that stock. And if the stock does become overfished, a long-lived stock is usually more difficult to restore than a short-lived one. On the other hand, if we have a long-lived fish, uh, I mean a short-lived fish with a high natural mortality rate, uh, this formula will allow a much wider buffer between the MSY level and the MSST. One problem with those fish that have low mortality rates is that we could end up, and we believe we have ended up, with the MSST threshold being set too close to the MSY level. And as a result, uh, we may still get spurious declarations of an overfished stock through natural fluctuations. So that's something that we're concerned about. Also, we're concerned that if we set MSST too close to the MSY level, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in these estimates of uh, stock biomass. And if we set it too close, not only will it not allow for natural fluctuations, but it may not really be detectively, detectively different from what the uh, MSY level is. So we want to have enough separation so that if the stock enters an overfished condition, we know definitely that it's overfished. It's not just some unusually large fluctuation, but not so large that we're going to have a major problem rebuilding the stock. And as I said, if the stock's too far from the biomass, uh, the good news is that if, uh, if we have the wide buffer, the council has plenty of time, plenty of flexibility to try to recover the stock without the constraints of a uh, rebuilding plan, which require certain uh, parameters be adhered to and require that a certain time frame be uh, used in order to rebuild the stock. But if the stock drops below that 50% level or whatever is chosen, then we've dug a pretty big hole for ourselves. So we've got a major rebuilding plan and it'd probably need a lot of restrictions. So there's, there's our problem. Uh, do we set it too cl very close to MSY in order to keep the stock from getting in a severely overfished condition, but risk having these spurious overfish declarations? Or do we give it a very broad uh, 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 buffer, which makes it less likely that the stock would be declared overfished, but if it is declared overfished, then we've got a problem with a pretty major rebuilding plan. Uh, this amendment is only going to address seven of the stocks in the refish FMP. There's 31 stocks in all in that re FMP, but only seven of them currently have MSST definitions uh, and other uh, uh, status determination criteria. Uh, what we're looking at here is the possibility of perhaps revising some of these MSST definitions. And for those other stocks where we don't have any definition at all, those are being moved into another amendment where we're going to look at all the status determination, determination criteria together for those stocks. But all we're looking at here are seven stocks, GAG, Red Grouper, Red Snapper, Vermilion Snapper, Gray Triggerfish, Greater Amberjack, and Hogfish. Three of those are currently classified as uh, overfished. That's the red snapper, the great triggerfish, and the greater amberjack. And, and you can see the uh, top three we've highlighted in red. Those are the ones that, uh, using the formula, that 1 minus m formula, sets a buffer that's uh, uh, pretty close to the MSY level. We, we generally consider if it's a less than a 25% buffer, uh, that, that we're getting awfully close to the MSY level, and we run into that problem of spurious overfish declarations or fluctuate, natural fluctuations exceeding that buffer. Uh, also, you'll note that we have one fish, hogfish, where we're not using the 1 minus M formula. Uh, the, uh, this uh, was just approved a few weeks ago. It's not even on the books yet, but it will be as soon as some administrative procedures are, are followed. And hogfish right now is scheduled to have its minimum stock size threshold set at 75% of its BMSY level and we use 30% SPR in that case as a proxy for MSY. If we did not do that, if we use the 1 minus M, 
it has a natural mortality rate of 0.179, about 0.18. So instead of being at 75% of uh, the MSY level, it would be at 82% um, uh, of the BMSY level. It would have a much narrower uh, buffer. So we've got six alternatives for what to do here. And again, those these are only going to affect those seven stocks. And, and depending upon which alternative we select, they're only going to actually affect a subset of those seven. So alternative one, the no action alternative, says that the MSST for these seven refish stocks will not be changed. What you saw on the previous uh, table will remain as is. Alternative two says that we'll use this formula for all of them. What, uh, MSST equals one minus M times B MSY. And as I said, since, uh, excuse me, I went too far. Uh, hogfish is the only stock that's not using that formula right now. That would be the only one that's affected by alternative two. Alternative three is the preferred alternative, and this is an either-or alternative. It would use the formula or 75% of BMSY, whichever provides the larger buffer. So everything will be at least a 25% buffer, but if the formula would give it a larger buffer, then the uh, existing buffer would, uh, would uh, continue to remain in place. And again, that preferred alternative affects those three stocks that are in red up here. You see, if you look on the right-hand column, right now we've got buffers of between 9% and 20%. Those would all go up to a 25% buffer. And then the stocks that are below that already have a 25% buffer or wider, and those would remain as is. The remaining three alternatives here, alternative four, alternative five, and alternative six, would set the minimum stock size threshold at some fixed proportion of BMSY either 85%, 75%, or 50%. That's going from most conservative to least conservative. And, and depending upon if, which is chosen, if we could go that way, some or all of the stocks would be affected. So what I've done is I've put together a table here to try to show how each of the alternatives would affect the stocks. Alternative one is a no action stock, and this is how wide the buffer is for each of the stocks that we have right now. They range from a narrow buffer of 9% for red snapper to the widest one is 28% for greater amberjack. Alternative two, which would use the one minus M buffer for all of the stocks. As I said before, we're already using it for all except hogfish. So hogfish is the only one that would be changed and it would re result in a narrower buffer. In this table, anything that's highlighted in red would go to a narrower buffer than what we currently have. Anything that's highlighted in green would go to a wider buffer. So under preferred alternative three, which is at either or, everything is at least 25% of the BMSY. But if the formula allows a wider buffer, then we use the formula. So under this uh, change, you can see that GAG would go from a 13% buffer to a 25%, Red Grouper from a 20% buffer to a 25% and red snapper from a 9% buffer to a 25%. And then everything else would be the way it was, 25 to 28%, depending upon which species. Alternative four, which is the most conservative uh, alternative in this list, would set everything at a 15% buffer. Now, as I said, it was less conservative. For two of the stock, it's the stocks, it's not. For GAG, it would widen that buffer from 13 to 15%. And for red snapper, it would widen it from 9 to 15%. But for everything else, it would narrow the buffer. You can see that right now we have 20% to 28%. And all of those stocks would go to a narrower buffer of 15%. Alternative five would be a fixed 75% uh, for everything, not the either or. In this case, the three stocks that would get a broader buffer under the preferred alternative would continue to get the broader buffer but two stocks would get a narrower buffer. Gray triggerfish right now has a 27%. It would narrow slightly to 25%. And the same with greater amberjack. It currently has a 28% buffer. It would be narrowed to 25%. And then vermilion snapper and hogfish would be unaffected. And finally, alternative six, which is the most liberal that we're allowed to do, would set the uh, MSST level at 50% of BMSY. All of our stocks have a narrower buffer than that, so all of the stocks 
would go to this broader buffer of 50% from wherever they are under the alternative one. So that's the range of alternatives that we're looking at. The council's preferred is alternative three, which would say uh, use the formula, but everything's at least a 25% buffer. And if the formula allows for a wider buffer, use the formula. And again, this applies only to these seven species. Uh, there's 31 species in all in the uh, refish fishery management plan, but the other species don't have the other status determination criteria. This is used to uh, determine if the stock is overfished. And there's another criteria that's used to determine if overfishing is occurring. And then there's another criteria as to what proxy to use for MSY. And we're not looking at those other items here. We're only looking at MSST and whether or not to revise them in the current, in the seven stocks that currently have that defined. 